Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Inshallah, Project Masjid Adawa Allah presents the topic of today, which is the history of Makkah. Our guest speaker is Brother Farooq Dakiri. So, without any delay, I will hand that mic over. Baruch la feek. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وكذلك أوحينا إليك قرآنا عربيا لتنذر أم القرى ومن حولها وتنذر, وتنذر يوم الجمع لا ريب فيه فريق في الجنة وفريق في السعير الله سبحانه وتعالى رذيل إن سورة الشورة سورة الشورة is a surah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal at number 42, surah number 42, by the title shawra means counseling, means you seek advice and you share your opinion in order to achieve the best of result or the best of uh, opinion when before you make a decision you discuss and you counsel and you uh, uh, take advice from each other or share advice and you make a decision collectively and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believer that his matter is shawra baynakum matter the muslim he he consult and he share and he, he ask he share his experience plus he ask of other experience <coughs> and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah in the ayah number seven he talks about that Allah revealed Quran and Arabian. We have revealed to you an Arabic Quran. لتندر أم القرى. So you warn the mother of all cities. An um, mother, in Arabic, when we say um, means the master or the head of. As Surah Al-Fatiha is um al-kitab. So the Fatih is the head of the book, the first chapter of the book. So is Umm al-Qura, Mecca, is the mother of all cities. And the ulama refer to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he link Mecca and Mukarrama to the creation of the heaven and the earth. That means Mecca is the first city that Allah created on earth. And the hadith of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إِنَّ هَذَا الْبَلَدِ حُرْمَ حَرَّمَهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ This city, referring to Mecca, Allah made it haram, means haram people, sacred in the sense that this is a holy city. Yawma khalaqa samawad. The day Allah created the heaven and the earth. That is mean that the Mecca was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> alongside creating the heaven and the earth. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَهُوَ حَرَامٌ بِحُرْمَةُ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ so the Allah created it sacred 
from the first, from the minute Allah created the earth, He created Mecca with it, and He made it sacred, and it should be sacred all the way till the day of judgment. And Prophet Sallallahu says, وَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَحِلُّ الْقِتَالُ فِيهِ لِأَحَدٍ قَبْلِ It was made forbidden to fight in Mecca. It is sacred, so in that sense, it's not allowed to any war in Mecca. Except the Prophet Sallallahu were given permission for a few minutes to fight those who were betraying him at the opening of Mecca. Allah allowed the Prophet Sallallahu to fight those who were hiding to attack him because the Prophet ﷺ made peace treaty with Sufyan. Uh, Sufyan was the head of Mecca. He made a peace treaty with Sufyan that he will hand in Mecca to the Prophet ﷺ peacefully. But Allah uh, told, sent Jibreel to the Prophet ﷺ to tell him there is a group of Meccan, Quraysh Meccan, they betray, they're betraying your treaty with Sufyan. It's not Sufyan's fault. They are group, like gangsters. They were hiding. They were waiting for you to enter Mecca. And they will attack you from the back. So the Prophet ﷺ asked permission to Allah to fight them when they were in Mecca to fight them before he enters Mecca because he wanted to enter Mecca peacefully. He didn't want to enter Mecca fighting. So he asked permission to Allah to fight them first and then after defeating them, then he will enter Mecca peacefully as was agreed with with the leader, Sufyan leader, Sufyan radiallahu anhu, who became a companion afterward. So Allah allowed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it was sacred. Nobody was permitted. Allah does not permit anybody to fight in Mecca, except was given the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam those to fight these small gangsters. Uh, and they defeated them. And after defeating them, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laid the weapon down and they entered Mecca without weapons. You know, And they entered peacefully. So it looked like... they. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to enter Mecca without any arm, without any weapons. Uh, and that was the uh, hero heroic uh, vision uh, the Prophet ﷺ also to be doc doctor, uh, documented in history. That the Prophet ﷺ did not enter Mecca with a sword. He did not enter Mecca uh, with, uh, with putting fear in the people. Rather, he entered Mecca uh peacefully as a as a guest as a as a and he was a guest and he prophet sallam acted as a guest in mecca and he even prayed qasr in mecca you know, to show that he is only coming for a guest and not to dock rule or government for the he left the meccan people to rule themselves uh, and this this is what the sacred the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that the sacred of Allah, the sacred of Allah is since Allah created the earth and the heaven. فَهُوَ حَرَامٌ بِحُرْمَةِ اللَّهِ لَيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا يَعْضُدُ شَوْكَةً وَلَا يَنْفَرُ صَيْدَةً. So uh, Prophet ﷺ says it is so sacred that you do not plug. Uh, a tree, nor you hunt in Mecca, uh, and all these act of sacred that a person should not be doing in Mecca, uh, because it's a city of uh, Hajj uh, pilgrim and a city of uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it sacred that the person should respect uh, what is inside it as well. Uh, uh, having said that, 
Prophet also said, every prophet made Hajj. Every prophet made Hajj. So to the Kaaba, to the Kaaba. Every prophet made Hajj to the Kaaba. That means including Adam alayhi salam. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentioned that the Kaaba was built by Adam alayhi uh, salam. Some ulama say otherwise, say because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, in the awwal baytun buniya, in the awwal baytun wudi'a lil-nas lil-ladhi bibakka mubarakan wa hudan lil-alameen. The first house which all which uh, which was which was placed in in the, for the people means was placed for the people to worship that one that house is in in bakka mecca was called bakka uh, it was called bakka because bakka comes from crying people used to go to mecca to cry for their sins and but this name was a, a negative name, and Allah changed it to Mecca, to a praiseworthy means a place of uh, people who love to stay, hmm? like a hotel, like a Mecca. Mecca itself is a hotel. It's a it's a host hospitality. Yeah? The whole Mecca is a place of hospitality. So Mecca it was changed. To a beautiful name, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned that it was called Bakka. Uh, people called it Bakka uh, for the sake of, and this is Allah Subhanahu wa mentioned that this uh, city is Mubarak. It means it's blessed, and Mubarak means whatever it is in there, Allah will bring the Barakah in it. Uh, and Barakah means that a person sees goodness in it. That uh, a person, when he, for example, he has an apple, he could be eating the apple, but no vitamin come inside the apple. He could be eating a date, but it won't benefit him because the date is maybe uh, like today we know uh, so many food has no vitamins, no nutrition. Yeah, but. In Mecca, anything that grows has bark. Anything is in there is bark. Every tree, every animal, every uh, cattle, every everything in Mecca that has blessing in it, and that is why Zamzam. Uh, scholars say Zamzam runs under the ground, but when it reaches Mecca, it becomes bark. It has blessing in the water. That is why, because the Mecca the water reaches Mecca and becomes blessed. That's why Zamzam is a blessed water. When it reaches Mecca, it becomes blessed. Yeah, So it goes under the ground, and some scholars say it comes from Furat. Furat is in Iraq, uh, which is called in English the Tiger River. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Tiger River is from Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ says, referring to the Tiger River in Iraq, it's a water from Jannah. So this water tiger comes from Iraq all the way in the ground, all the way to Mecca. And then when it reaches Mecca, it becomes Zamzam. And why it becomes Zamzam? Because it reached Mecca and then it becomes blessed. So subhanAllah, it's uh, also the Arab used to realize that when they used to bring their camels and they, are, and they used to see that the camel rest in Mecca. There's blessing in the camel and a blessing in the milk of the camel and, and other. So they used to realize that in their, in their animal and the, in the herd when they walk past Mecca. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu everything you hear about Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu made dua that Medina shall be the same. So every time, everything you hear about Mecca, any goodness you hear about Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ made dua that Medina be 
similar to Mecca. The blessing in Mecca, there is also in Medina because of the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wahudan lil alameen, and it's a city of guidance. Again, if Mecca was the city of guidance, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made also dua that Medina becomes also a city of guidance because of the dua. But Mecca is a, a city of guidance. And it's true, it is discovered even by experience uh, <coughs> that it is a brother said, a brother went to a sheikh and said, my son is uh, in drugs. He takes drugs. The sheikh advised him, take your son to Umrah, to Mecca. Take him to Umrah. And he took him to Umrah. The son went to Umrah and hoping that he find a cure. He thought they will find a cure. You find a doctor there or a counselor or medicine in Mecca. He just went to Mecca. And by being there, then Umrah and prayed to Allah. The, the, he was like, the, like he found tranquility and blessing in Mecca. He came back and he, Allah guided him to, to stop. So this is a very good, very, very, wallahi, it's a, it's a, it's a seeking guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Mecca is a place of seeking guidance. So if a person wants to seek guidance and he can't control himself, can't, go to Mecca, go in for Umrah and start new, start fresh. But start from Mecca, the seeking of guidance in Mecca and similarly Medina. As the Prophet ﷺ made dua. And Mecca was a place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed it in the center of the earth uh, as it is uh, it's a long research that we don't won't have time for this but it is uh, researched by some scholars and others from uh, in detail explained from verses of Quran and Hadith that proves that the Quran is in the center of the earth. And it's also many of the scholars mentioned. But signify also that Mecca is exactly the same place where Al Bayt al Ma'mur, the Bayt al Ma'mur, which is the house, Allah called it the house of Ma'mur which the Prophet ﷺ talks about uh, the uh, 70,000 angel every day go and do hajj there. They do tawaf around. This is the place where the angel do tawaf. Uh, they do their own hajj uh, up there above the seven heaven. And Allah made it exactly the same position down in earth. Uh, and this is a, a place, some ulama say, that Mecca is also the place where uh, Adam and his wife met uh, in earth that they, and the mountain of Arafah is the mountain of uh, where Adam and his wife, alayhi salam, met to do hajj, uh, and they they met, but uh, there is also ikhtilaf in this matter. But it makes Mecca, it's a place of where Adam السلام, definitely made hajj, and he sees the first per person to make hajj, uh, Adam السلام, and so all the children of Bani Adam took that. So hajj is not uh, something only for Ibrahim or Islam as as fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about fasting kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum fasting prescribed and it was prescribed before you salah same thing all pillar that we do in Islam it was prescribed to the people similarly to us 
And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Shawra. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we revealed an Arabic Qur'an to warn Umm al qura to warn the mother of the Qur'an, referring to Mecca. So the Qur'an was revealed to make da'wah to Mecca. And, and the people around, around it means that you expand your da'wah to the people around it. But how come then Islam is to the whole humanity? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring here to do da'wah to Umm al qura Mecca and the surrounding. In that sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says take Mecca as an example of the da'wah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought in their own language brought it in Arabic because people in Mecca used to speak Arabic. So he brought the Quran to make da'wah and the example how Allah uh, spread Islam in Mecca so you will go and spread the deen in the rest of the world similarly. And that is why if we look at the concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that 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 we that we look at the example how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread Islam in Mecca, we should do the same thing in the rest of the world. And that is why it comes that Quran should be translated to the tongue of the people and make da'wah with the tongue of the people as as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did in Mecca we shall <coughs> shall be done the same thing and Mecca is a place of example the history of Mecca in that sense becomes an example to all other the people look at Mecca and take example a moral example to adapt it and Having said that, as uh, some scholar used to say in the Salaf, he says, you Mecca should unite the Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Qibla to Mecca. Everybody facing in Salah, Mecca. And it's a, ta it's a place of Hajj for every people, for every Muslim. It doesn't matter what language or what nationality he is. He faces the Kaaba in Salah and he goes Hajj in Kaaba. That means it is the heart of the Islam and it's the prayer. If they used to say, if Mecca doesn't unite the Muslim, nothing shall unite. If Mecca doesn't really unite the Muslim, nothing would unite. Because this is, was the unity of the uh, prophets. The prophets, Allah united them in that they all did Hajj in Mecca and they all were linked into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala previously made the Qibla to Al-Quds before, the Qibla was facing Al-Quds. The reason why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waited for the right time to direct people to Mecca to uh, to test the people, to test the people whether they will turn back to the Qibla of the origin, yeah, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So he waited. The Qibla was always before it was Mecca, the Qibla. But Allah changed it in uh, to Bani Israel to be Jerusalem. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waited for the Prophet ﷺ to come and the final message to come and then divert to be a clean new religion, and a new order, a new... And so people, after have established their iman and have established their uh, knowing the deen and property, they're ready to face the right way. So the right way is, have been always to face the qibla 
but Allah waited for the right time. And that gives you wisdom <coughs> that sometime things is wrong, you wait for the right time to change things. Sometimes many things, for example, you like for example your car. Yeah, you, your car. You you know you need to change your car, but you wait for the right time to change your car. You might not. You know you need to change it, but you won't change it today. You wait for the right time when you need when you when you think now it's time to change my car or now the time to change my house. Yeah, there's wisdom in everything we do, and, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also delayed uh, in the in the zam of wisdom to for many reason and one of them to teach the people that uh, this is the qibla that is unite all the prophets this is your this is the qibla that will unite the ummah and this is the most beloved place which, which was in the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and how much the Prophet Sallallahu loved it and that is from love then comes Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he changed the Qibla he links the changing the Qibla to Kaaba to the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam see he doesn't just link it oh now I changed the Qibla because I demanded it no Allah doesn't link it to his decision he links it to the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so here there's a love story going on between the Prophet and Mecca, between the Prophet and the Kaaba. And Allah links it to that, that the person actually loves Mecca for the sake of Allah and for the sake of the love of the Prophet Sallallahu So the love here uh, is including the love of the Prophet Sallallahu So when a person loves Mecca, he loves it because he not only because it's the Kaaba and the house of Allah, but also because the Prophet ﷺ loved it. And I face the Qibla, not because that's the center and that's what Allah wants. No, it's also because the love of the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah wants to include in our worship eh, and, our, uh, and our practice the love of the Prophet ﷺ. And that is why in our Salah, in the beginning, in the Salah, there was no Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You know, in the Salah, when we sit in the Tashahud at the end, the beginning in Salah, there was no Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It was later put to the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? The, the companion came to, Oh Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we love you so much. We went in our Salah. So here, then they, then they was added to the Salah that we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad known by the Durood Sharif or the Salat al Ibrahimiyya. So in our worship it is include uh, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu So when we ever think about Mecca there should be the love of the Prophet Sallallahu including in in our in our uh, worship, in our mind, in our thought and the the history of Mecca, inshallah, we I will uh, in an, in another session, inshallah, where we will have a, a map, inshallah, if we can get a projector, inshallah, where we have a, a map of Mecca and we talk about a different part of Mecca and how how from the historical part of Mecca. But today I want to concentrate to how what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Quran perspective, uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talks about Mecca and he talks about in the Quran how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give oath La uqsimu bihada al balad wa antahillum bihada al balad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, I, I give oath by this city, referring to Mecca, وَأَنْتَحِلُّمْ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ And you are, uh, have, you have, you have been brought up in this city. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is he's linking Mecca to the Prophet Here, how, how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh, 
uh, always uh, try to link the love of Mecca, the honor of Mecca, with the honor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this, the, the, and, and many, and many ahadith refer to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he, when he expressed his love to the Prophet, uh, to, to Mecca, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one incident, he says, uh, when he was leaving Mecca, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, stood at the edge of Mecca and he said, "Alimta uh, Allah." He was talking like talking to Mecca directly, like Mecca was listening to him. He says, "I know that you are the best part of Earth. You are the best. Mecca is the best uh, uh, location on Earth." The most beloved place of earth to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْلَا أَنَّ أَهْلِكِ أَخْرَجُونِي If it wasn't my people throwed me out, مِنْكِ مَا خَرَجْتْ I will never have left. That Prophet Sallam talking, I would have never left because I love you so much, but the people forced me uh, to leave. And that shows you that... Uh, uh, sometime for the sake of the deen, you might leave the most beloved city to you and the city that you belong to and you, uh, for the sake of deen, for the sake of, uh, for the sake of uh, different issue, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make the love less. Hmm? But... Uh, the, the 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 love of Mecca because the Prophet ﷺ also in other hadith links the love of Mecca to Ibrahim ﷺ and to all the prophets generally but specifically Ibrahim ﷺ uh, because the the Prophet the Prophet Ibrahim loved Mecca and he made so much du'a for Mecca so there is an attachment you know like you love your own country because your father belonged to this country. You're proud. You see, you see some people like here, born in, in UK, and they might not know nothing about Pakistan. But they love Pakistan because of their father. Or you, you lived in this country, you don't know about Somalia. But your father comes from Somalia. So you got some love to Somalia. Why? Because of your father. Because your father comes from Somalia, your father comes from Pakistan. You love the city because your father comes from it. And you feel attached to the city. And the Prophet ﷺ loved Mecca because of his attachment to Ibrahim. ﷺ. And he used to mention uh, in many ahadith uh, that Ibrahim ﷺ harrama Mecca wa da'a li ahliha. That the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that. Uh, Mecca is so beloved to us. It's the place where uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, established the sacredism, sacredism and uh, and he made dua for its people. The dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, a famous dua mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, uh, that Allah, Allah shall bless all the believer in Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even the disbeliever. Yeah, I will bless them. I will bless the believer and the disbeliever who live in Mecca. Even if there is kuffar, fusaq, you know, corrupter, Allah will say, I'll oh, bless them. Yeah, then he will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, judge them on the day of judgment uh, in return with punishment. Uh, but Allah has, with the dua of Ibrahim, that he bless everybody who is in Mecca, good and bad. And that makes the du'a of Ibrahim uh, and, uh, uh, that a person uh, l relate and link to it and he finds uh, in Mecca or oh, what is the blessing of du'a of Ibrahim. But the Prophet ﷺ also again I mentioned in this hadith, uh, Prophet ﷺ highlight, وَإِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الْمَدِينَةِ So I made Medina sacred. Prophet ﷺ says, as Ibrahim made Mecca sacred, established the sacredism in Mecca. 
I made Medina also sacred كما حرم إبراهيم مكة وإني دعوت في صاعها ومدها بمثل بمثل ما دع I made dua for Medina as much as Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua to Mecca. So here it shows that the Prophet sallallahu expresses his love to Mecca and Medina equally. And uh, and he asked Allah to bless Medina as, as he blessed Mecca. And that's what makes Medina equally sacred as Mecca because of the dua of the Prophet sallallahu So here again, our love to Mecca and Medina is linked to the love of the Prophet sallallahu <coughs> And this is uh, this is a part of our iman, because the Prophet sallallahu says, "La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhib hatta akunu ahabu ilayhi min nafsi wa walidhi wa walidhi." Uh, nobody is a believer until he, uh, until I, means the Prophet Sallallahu he be, become more beloved than yourself and your father and your children, your forefather and all your children, referring your 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 parents and your children. You lo- that you love the Prophet Sallallahu more than your parents and more than your children. And having established this principle. Uh, that you love Mecca and Medina more than the city of your father and more than the city of your children. Yeah. So now, for example, uh, you're born here. You love this city, this country. Yeah. You, and then, but you love also the city of your father. Yeah. So you got two cities you love. Uh, because you, some this city you were born in, you link yourself to it, and the other city linked to your father and your parents. They come from that city, so you got two love. But the Mecca and Medina, that love should be greater. And the reason because of the love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because you love the Prophet sallallahu more than your parents, and that makes the love of Mecca and Medina uh, more than your own city or the city of your father. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who love the Prophet sallallahu most and love Mecca and Medina most. Inshallah, this uh, we continue uh, in the next lecture with the detailed history of Mecca, inshallah, with the, uh, from the historian, inshallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Jazakallah khair, Brother Farooq. Inshallah, now we will take questions. Inshallah, if you just raise your hand and in sequence you arrange the question. Please keep all questions relevant to the topic. Barakallah Feek. Yeah, Asghar, come on. One question, Asghar. It has to be one. It has to be one. With, uh, with, with Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu was he the only Prophet be born in Mecca? Yes, uh, the Prophet ﷺ is the only Prophet born Mecca in, in Surah Al-Balad, in Tafsir, in Surah that uh, I mentioned. لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد. And he's referring to the birth of the Prophet ﷺ to be unique in Mecca. He's to the oath of the Mecca. That why the Prophet ﷺ he's the only uh, Prophet born in Mecca. And according to the all the uh, uh, prophet stories of Ibn Kathir, another the prophet is a very good question to highlight. The prophet Sallam was chosen to be born in Mecca. That it's a, a sign that he's the final messenger to be born in the best, <coughs> in the best, the best prophet, and the best of mankind to be born in the best of uh, place of earth. Inshallah. Whom Allah blessed him with the best clan and and also blessed him with the best companion and the best generation. So yeah, you, very good question, mashallah. I have um, three questions here. The first one is: Do you advise people to learn the history of religious places before visiting, for example, Umrah or Hajj? Visit uh, before they go and visit Umrah or Hajj, yeah. that they learn the history of the. 
place. Uh, we we spoke we 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 actually indulged in these uh, similar question to Sheikh uh, to Sheikh in Medina Mecca, and one of the Sheikh was talking about uh, because people when they go to Mecca and Medina, they uh, because of the fitna today that the people holify so many different places like they go to the cave of the Prophet Sallallahu and they start doing bid'ah there and like praying to ruk'ah or staying like uh, or stay one hour there uh, do dhikr or, or go to Uhud and do so and so and do you know people do lots of bid'ah and lots of bid'ah so uh, it shouldn't be the uh, one. One of the sheikh mentioned. I don't remember his name is a sheikh, but one of the sheikh in Medina mentioned. Uh, it shouldn't be made highlight that people should learn uh, history of Mecca and Medina before going Hajj or Umrah. No, they let them concentrate on the ibad, on the worship. You coming to Mecca to do an act of worship. You coming to Medina. To pray in the Masjid of the Prophet, not to visit this side, this side. This is a secondary thing and it's not important. It shouldn't be like the primary thing or, or something you should, oh, I have to learn this before going to Medina. No. Rather, a person should learn uh, you know, his ibadah, his pillar of hajj and, uh, and some ad'iyah, learn the dua, so what he should make dua, what should you, you know, and. Uh, and other things that he, what is linked to the act of worship, and what is haram, what is halal, what is bid'ah, what is so he doesn't make mistakes. Uh, when he goes to Medina, he doesn't fall into mistake. When he visits the grave of the Prophet, he should know what to say, not 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 what not to say, because many people fall into the trap of uh, getting a wrong book, and then they come make du'a. An act of worship at the graves in the Baqiyah, for example, or whereas they should only do salam and other things. So they should concentrate on these things of ibadah and haram and halal rather than the history or thing. But there's no harm if a person is intelligent and uh, other thing uh, he has done, done uh, learned his ibadah and all, learned the pillars of ibadah and hajj and umrah and other. Then he goes and learn the history as a secondary thing. Yes, inshallah. <clears throat> the second question is, how does one show love towards the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? This is a very good question, and uh, uh, one can answer it in uh, one hour lecture or two or three. Uh, but primarily. Uh, <clears throat> the love of the Prophet Sallallahu is the love of when you love your someone, you love to follow him. And uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala explained this love in the Quran. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحُبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Tell them, or Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tell people, if you really love Allah, then follow me means if you love Allah, you will follow the Prophet ﷺ. Because, Allah, because the Prophet ﷺ follows Allah. So if you love Allah, you follow the one who is following Allah. So for example, uh, you love Allah and you love the one who is following Allah. For example, if you, if you, if you love... Uh, let's talk a very simple example so children can understand. If someone loves... Uh, Manchester United or Liverpool or whatever he loves this team football team he will <coughs> love also the people who yeah, who follow this team as well naturally you love this is how do you love you you will follow them you will uh, you will follow what they do uh, whatever well I don't advise people should love any of the team this is fitna inshallah especially when people go too much in love then they start wearing the T-shirt which has crosses and all this. So don't love Manchester, don't love Liverpool. They're a waste of time. Love, the best team is the Prophets. Yeah. And someone asked me, well, who, who, which team do you support? 
I said, team? Yeah, yeah, what do you mean? I said, the prophets. They are the best team, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, inshallah, they'll, they'll, they'll be a team in the day of in the, in the Jannah. We want to be with them in Jannah. So when you love the Prophet, you should be following those who followed the Prophet. That's a very, very important fact. Because Allah, what does Allah say? Allah says, if you love Allah, you follow who? The Prophet. Now, if you love the Prophet, who do you follow? Those who follow you, you follow the ones who followed the Prophet. You see? Allah is explaining the principle. If you love Allah, follow the Prophet. Because, Allah, because the Prophet loves Allah. The Prophet follows Allah, then follow the Prophet. <coughs> If we love the Prophet sincerely, we should be following those who love the Prophets. Means we should be following his wives. We should be following his companions. We should be following all this first generation who followed the Prophet. This is the true love of the Prophet. Because the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you truthfully love Allah, follow the Prophet. And if you truthfully love the Prophet, you follow the companion. You follow the first best generation who loved him, who Allah chose uh, to be the best generation. So this is the sign how you know. If you love Abu Bakr, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ali, then that means you love the Prophet. But the person says, I love the Prophet, but he doesn't care about Abu Bakr, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ali. He doesn't care about the wives of the Prophet. Or he doesn't care about all these people who are attached to the Prophet. He doesn't truly love the Prophet. Is a fake love, yeah. So this is how this is how complete love, the complete love that you love the prophets and you love his wives, his children, his his companion, and all this best generation. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes us among the true lovers of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Final question is, how do we show our love towards Mecca and Medina? The love to Mecca and Medina. That we pray regularly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us to visit. That we grant us to visit uh, either Umrah or Hajj. Uh, that, that dua should be in the heart of every Muslim. Wallahi, if you make dua sincerely, even if you don't have a penny, you will see a miracle that Allah will grant you to do Hajj or Umrah, inshaAllah ta'ala. Make dua continuously that you go and see the Kaaba and that you be among the guest of the Prophet uh, of a guest of the uh, guest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the, in the, in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam masjid that you pray you get the reward uh, the greatest reward of a, uh, of a thousand prayer and uh, in the Mecca every ruk'ah you pray is like thousand ruk'ah uh, thousand five, uh, five hundred in, uh, in Medina. So this is great. That's what you express your love uh, that you want to pray there, that you want to gain the reward there. Uh, and uh, and this is that you want to go there to cleanse your sin. You want to go there to be among the Hujjaj. You want to go there and do Hajj and be on Arafah, uh, on the mountain of Arafah, on the day of Hajj, the best, on the best day of the year in the best place of earth huh? yeah. and uh, uh, this is uh, the, the that you want to be among those whom Allah uh, forgive uh, that Allah is proud of on the day of Arafah Allah will be proud of people and he will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show, he look he will pay tell, uh, get attention of the angel look at my servants they gathered on the mountain uh, what do they want? They just want my my forgiveness. So this is what we aim. That's what, how I love to Mecca and Medina. Uh, Allah bless them. That, and that we prepare, as we said before, we prepare for this act of worship. And we learn it. And we prepare for it. And we go there with all the athkar, the ad'iyya. Uh, we prepare for it. Uh, and when we go there, we know what is haram, halal. We know this pillar of this pillar of Hajj or Umrah that we establish it. How Allah loves us to establish.
for the, it is it is it is the jihad, Hajj is jihad. No, Prophet calls Hajj jihad, <coughs> especially for the woman, but also for the man is a is a is a is, a, is an act of jihad. So how much we love to do jihad, this is how much we love to go uh, to Mecca, and it is uh, an act which is. Uh, you get not only you do the pillar, but you get to meet a person from different type part of the world. And when a person sees you, even if you smile to him and just say salam alaikum, and he says, Oh, you know, I met someone from England and he's living in Africa and he's proud of it. I met a Muslim from England. Yeah, and people feel proud. You prefer to have met someone Muslim from another part of the world without having to go to the other part of the world. And he feel proud of his deen, pre-brother. And many Muslim tells you that uh, Allah guided them. Uh, a famous uh, figure in history, uh, Malcolm X, hmm. that he uh, he found uh, he, uh, that when he went to Mecca, he realized what is correct Islam. In 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 America, he was misguided to a, a wrong concept of Islam, and racism Islam, and other Islam which is a fake Islam. But when he made to Mecca, and this is a place of guidance, he was guided, and he was loved. He loved Mecca so much that what is is he met people from around the world, and that's what opened his eyes to to the right Islam. So, Subhanallah, Allah, you are a da'wah. When you go to to Mecca, you are you you are as an individual a da'i. Yeah, people meet you. And uh, it could be a person like Malcolm X. You meet, he meets you, and he talks to you, and he gets guided. You know, Subhanallah. Because Malcolm X w was guided by simple people. Yeah, he was sitting in the tent with different people, and <laughs> he was guided. Subhanallah. So you could be a source of guidance. So nobody should uh, uh, should n should n neglect this pillar of Hajj and Umrah. You should strive, inshallah, to go. And uh, it could be an opportunity of not only of forgiving the sins, the cleanse our sins, but also uh, the achievement of da'wah to uh, to the different part of the world. Even you never go to part of it. You, you could be the guidance of someone in Australia, <laughs> and the Australian meets you and he le he 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 learns Islam and he goes to Australia and he spread the deen and you are just you just met him in Hajj, and because of you. People in Australia get guided, so it's a, it's an opportunity for you. Subhanallah, you never know what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala use us for. Inshallah. Inshallah, we will stop now. Jazakallah khair to all for attending and to you, Brother Farooq. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk.